Hello again. So this video is regarding bloatware and how to get rid of them. So I've been using my Red Magic for almost a week now and I use it as a daily driver. So obviously I don't want to format this phone. But I have my LG Wing here, which is an older device. This comes with a lot of bloatware as well. So I have formatted the phone and let's see what are the different types of bloatware and how we can get rid of them. When you get your Red Magic, there will be a couple of apps which you would probably not use. There is TikTok, there is Booking.com and then a couple of different apps. And there are some system apps which also you might not use. So the first thing to go over are the three different types of bloatware. The first type are pre-installed apps. Pre-installed apps are just apps which paid the manufacturer so that they can be installed on the device in hopes that you will see the app and end up using them. So in LG, we see that we have Booking.com and TikTok, a couple of Google apps and a couple of LG apps. Now Booking.com and TikTok are pre-installed apps. They paid LG so that these apps come pre-installed in your phone. So you might end up clicking them, logging in and ending up creating an account. So it's a user conversion story. These apps are not system apps, so you could technically just uninstall them. So this is the first type of bloatware, which is called pre-installed apps, which you can just uninstall directly. The second type of apps are called system apps. So these are apps which are pre-installed in your phone even though they are not really required for the functioning of your phone, they still are termed as system just so that it's harder for you to uninstall. Some examples might be Google Assistant, uh, this Google app, Duo, um, if you don't use YouTube or if you don't use Maps, they are system apps which you can't un delete or you can't uninstall, but you can still disable them. So the second section of bloatware is system maps which you can disable one very cool thing i love about the red magic is that almost every app can be disabled very few apps exist on the red magic which are system apps which cannot be disabled and we'll go over how we can disable those as well i'm talking mainly about bloatware i'm not talking about actual system apps which you might use so let's go back to the lg so we've removed the two pre-installed apps, which we saw. I don't use Chrome, but unfortunately, Chrome will be a system app. So you can't uninstall it. The most you can do is disable it. And this is the same in case of Red Magic. You can disable this pre-installed app, which is a system app. Let's go over to other, some other apps. Very similar, Duo. Even if you never ever use Duo for calling, you can't remove it, but that's probably because, you know, Google owns Android at the moment and they want to push their apps on you. So these are the third type of uh, bloatware. System apps, which you can't even uninstall. What do you do here? Like the best you can do is you can remove all the permissions so that the apps don't run, but something else in the system could still boot it up. Like you might, plug in a headset and it says hey FM radio is available so that means there is some kind of trigger in your phone which opens that app even though you never wanted to any app like that is going to take storage on your phone it's going to take um, RAM it's going to take CPU usage and may maybe one of the reasons why most of those apps are disableable on the Red Magic is because it's a gaming phone and they want you to be uninterrupted by other apps so they allow you to disable them but still there are apps even on this one which you can't install so let's go over some of the apps on the red magic itself now so now we are at the red magic and we can see all the apps i've disabled i don't use android auto i don't even own a car what's the point there is a browser app if you check on samsung uh, the browser app no longer can be disabled in most devices Xiaomi is especially worse, the worst actually, when it comes to disabling system apps. They don't allow you to disable their system apps at all, even though you would never use them, even though you would use 
Chrome or Brave or Opera all the time, their browser is stuck to you. You can't escape it. And there are many other apps which I don't use, which are all disabled that you can see here. These, some of these I have disabled from um, this interface. So Android Auto, I think you can just disable it directly. So it's a pre-installed system app which you can disable. But some of the other apps, for example, this Nubia Link Free, I can't even enable it because I have disabled it using um, something called Android Debug Bridge or ADB. And we'll go through that later. So there are quite a lot of these apps on Red Magic as well. I would say this is the least amount because if you see some of my other phones like the Vivo or the OnePlus or especially the Xiaomi, there are like at least a hundred apps on them. Even Samsung, even there's like a hundred apps. And Red Magic has the least amount of pre-installed bloatware, I would say. Some of them are useful, like YouTube is useful, Google TV, if you use Google TV, Google one time in it is only used when you actually set up your account for the first time. Same with Google partner setup. I don't want those apps to always remain on my phone and somehow start running in the background, taking up RAM. So I'm just disabling altogether. So these are all of the apps which I've disabled. Now let's see some of the apps here, like bookmark provider or tags or meta services. These apps, even though they are system and pre-installed and most devices don't let you disable them, on Red Magic you can still do so, which I really love about Red Magic and Nubia that they allow you to disable most of the apps which you don't want to use. Why can't every manufacturer do this? I don't understand. Going forward to the apps which you cannot disable from the system, we are going to use the LG Wing in this case because I have more options here to actually show you. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go to settings and this is pretty much on every device. You go all the way to system or about. So let's see in the red magic. We have about phone. You scroll down to build number and then you keep clicking it five times until a setting shows up that you are a developer. So if you go the same here, go to build number and it says you are a developer. Now you get a separate options menu here which says developer options and the same on the red magic. It will be under system developer options. So under developer options, you will need to select a setting called USB debugging. Let me do that here. Allow. I would say turn this off if whenever you're not using it because it enables other developers to kind of hijack your device. So I would say just use it when you actually want to do something on your phone, otherwise disable it. And once that's set up, you can plug in a cable to your PC or your laptop. And let's move over to the laptop screen now. Now on PC, we need to install something called Android Debug Bridge to communicate with our device and disable those apps. Android Debug Bridge can be installed by searching for something called Android Platform Tools. Selecting this under Android Developers. And then there are three options, one for Windows, Mac and Linux. The Mac and Linux ones are much easier because of how Linux works internally and Windows is slightly more difficult. Sometimes you need to install a specific driver as well. So in case you're using Windows, you might also need something called the Google USB driver, which is here. And you can use this, download the zip file, install it. And then once that's set up, your ADB tools would start working. So now we need to open up something called the terminal or command prompt on Windows. If we search for ADB, it should show this huge list of commands which are available on ADB. And as soon as you type ADB devices, you should see a pop-up allow USB debugging and click the allow button. Once you do that, when you type in ADB devices again, 
it should show up your phone. So in my case, the LMF 100N1 and some thingy is my LG device. We can start to delete stuff from the phone. I'm going to use uh, the Android Studio to actually show you what's happening on the device. And first I'm going to show you how I'll delete one or two apps or system apps basically from the LG phone. And then we'll go to the Red Magic and actually disable one of those apps. Sorry, not delete, I meant disable. You still can't delete apps uh, anymore on Android. So on the LG, you can see here, there's an app called the FM radio. And I actually don't know what FM radio is, what is called in an app version. So when you use ADB, we can't reference the name of the apps. We have to reference something called the app package name. And it usually looks something like com.lg.fmradio or com.google.maps. Those are the package names of the apps themselves. And there are a couple of ways by which you can find the names of the apps. The easiest way I found is by looking them up on an app called the App Manager. So if you search for GitHub and App Manager on Google, you will end up on this GitHub page for an application called App Manager. This is how the logo looks like. Click on releases and it will take you to a link where you can download this APK file. Do this on your phone as in your Red Magic 11 Pro. You can download this APK and install it directly to your phone after which you can see the package names of the apps themselves on the phone then use that package name to disable it. Let's see how that looks like. So here I've installed App Manager on my LG phone. When you put it up, we'll tell you to store some key, which I've, I actually don't know what is used for. Maybe it's there in, in the GitHub, but I haven't used it. And once it'll ask you for a couple of permissions. And you can see these are the apps that are already installed. Let me search for FM radio. And then you can see here under FM radio, it says it is bloatware. And here you can see the package name. It is com.lge.fmradio. If you click on uninstall, it will ask you, yeah, you can uninstall, but of course it does not work because this phone is not rooted and you don't have system access to the phone. But we can still use ADB to try and disable this app. So how you can do that is by copying this command. And I'm going to try to leave all the links and the command and everything else in the description. And hopefully you can do that as well. ADB shell PM disable user. And now we are going to type in the name of the package, which is com.lge.fm radio. So because I'm switching from terminal to the, uh, to the device here, it keeps getting disconnected, but you will not be facing the same issues. So once I have that done, it should show something called package, the package name, new state, disabled user. Now I'm going to try to connect to the device again. And you can see here, it looks kind of the same, except it says disabled, right? And when we go home, this app is no longer here. So even though it's a system app and we can't disable it directly from the UI, we used Android debug bridge to kind of act as a super user, not exactly a super user, a developer to disable that app. And you can use the same to disable all the other apps on the device. Now moving on to the red magic itself. If we check within apps, I showed you before there are a lot of apps, one of which being this Alipay application. I'm not really sure what Alipay application is. It could be some way to make it easier to pay for stuff on um, Chinese websites or AliExpress or Alibaba, any of those. I'm not going to use it and I don't want it to be there. So let's do the same exact process to disable this app. 
So first thing we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to use App Manager. We're going to search for Alipay application. And you can see here the package name is something else entirely. It has nothing to do with Alipay. So it says comzt vendor IFAA. So now we can do adb shell pm disable user and comzt vendor IFAA and it should disable the application the same exact way. Now, since this app is already disabled, um, it's just going to say that it's already disabled. And you can see here it says comzt vendor IFA new state disabled user. That's because it's already disabled, so it can't disable it twice. But let's actually look for an app which I use now, or maybe there's an app which I don't use, which we can still disable. So going back to apps, going to use system, we can see there are a couple of apps, one of them being AI Translate. So I don't use AI Translate at the moment, but we can still disable it. And here you can see the disable button is grayed out. If you click it, nothing happens. And that's because this is a system app which does not let you disable it. So AI Translate, right? We go back to App Manager. We search for AI Translate and it says the package name is comzt nebula translation. So we do adb shell pm disable user com.zte. nebula translation. Now we check the state. It says now it's disabled. Going back to the app info, you can see that the app is indeed disabled now and there's no way to enable it. Now, in case you do want to enable it again, it's very simple. We have to go back um, to ADB and instead of disable user, I think it's just enable. Let's try it out. So yeah, it's just enabled. So if you just do enable, now the state is enabled and you can see the apps back working. So it's quite easy to revert it in case you accidentally disable something that's, um, that you shouldn't. And usually the apps which are required to run the system are even further protected. So you can't even disable them at all. Most of the system apps on Xiaomi are this way. So whenever you try to run this command, it throws an error saying security exception or that you you don't have the rights to do it. But in case of Red Magic, almost every app can be disabled. And I would say the apps that you should disable are the ones I did as well, except for any apps that you actually want to use from this. I can leave this list and the packages package name for these apps in the description so that you can basically just copy paste the entire list or disable them yourself one by one or just copy paste the commands in one go and then it'll do it for you. So yes, that is the full tutorial on debloating your Red Magic 11 Pro or any other Android device that you own and get some of that storage and RAM back. Hope this helps. See you guys.